Hello, this is Dr. Muhammad, and this is a kind of a uh, course contents for uh, design of steel uh, structures. It is uh, the code of this course is going to be, as you can see it here, 5323-41. <clears throat> this is my information. Uh, my name is uh, Mohammed, Professor Mohammed Nurdin. My office. You are going to find my uh, office in engineering building, fourth floor, room number twenty one, four zero one, and this is my phone number and this is my email. Now let's go and talk about the course description uh, itself. So this course covers the mechanical properties of structural steel and code procedure procedures based on uh, AISC, American Institute for Steel Construction, for member design of steel structures. So actually we are going to talk uh, in this course, um, uh, we are going to discuss different topics, which is going to be important for anyone who is going to design for the steel uh, structures. So let's start with what are the detailed or the details of, uh, of our course content. So first of all, we are going to start with, <clears throat> week one is going to be an introduction to this uh, course, introduction to steel structures. I'm going to touch uh, different points, important points and different topics. First, I'm going to talk about the building codes uh, and the difference between the code and the specifications. And then I'm going to talk about the structural steel types, different type of structural steel. And then we're going to talk about the typical stress strain curves for the different types of steel. Uh, and after that, we're going to talk about the different types of standard cross-sectional shapes that we are going to use during our design and uh, when we are uh, using it in the examples. So uh, first of all, it is important to uh, understand the philosophy of the design of the steel structure. So this is actually what we are going to uh, do in the second week. We are going to give an exposure to the design philosophy of steel structures. So I'm going to talk uh, firstly about the allowable stress strength design or allowable stress design it is <clears throat> the asd which is the the one of the most famous design philosophies and after that i'm going to give some hints about the plastic design and after that i'm going to talk about load and resistance factor design lrfd and then i'm going to uh, explain about the load combinations as it is written and or as it is required in ASCE and also as it is required in AS in AISC. Uh, we are going to take example after that and we are going to make uh, a comparison uh, between or of LRFD and uh, against or versus ASD or with ASD for tension members. So we are going to see how the design philosophy is going to uh give us difference in the design for a tension member okay so because actually we have chosen the tension member because <clears throat> in this way we can make a good comparison uh, so you are going to understand uh, what is the uh, the difference between lrfd and asd regarding uh, tension member and which one is more economic which one is going to give thicky element which one is going to give less safety factor and so on and then at the end i'm going to talk about some um, some hints about why we should lrfd uh, why this design philosophy or design procedure should should be used and uh, we're going to give some hints about why it should be used and uh, why most of the design codes and textbooks uh, are highly concerned with LRFD. Okay, now this is for the second week, and after that we are going to <clears throat> talk about the design of tension member, which is considered to be the first uh, thing that we are going to uh, uh, deal as a design or from the design point of view. So design of tension members. So we're going to talk about the failure modes of tension member. What are the failure modes? We have different failure modes for uh, the tension member. 
uh, and we are going to discuss about L RFD design strength <clears throat> and then we are going to apply what we have learned here on an example. After that, in week number four, we are going to talk about uh, different things related to uh, tension members still. So we are going to talk about the fictive area, what is the meaning and definition of it, what is the meaning of shear lag that might occur whenever that we are designing a tension member, which is not symmetric, for example. Then we are going to have an example, and then we are going to go to the stacker, staggered fasteners. Uh, and check the geometry for different uh, staggered uh, schemes. And then we're going to talk about the block shear failure, one of the important failure modes uh, for tension member uh, in general. And then design of tension members, the steps for the design of tension members. Uh, after that, actually, this by week four, we are going to conclude the uh, whatever related to the tension members. After that, we are going to talk about the compression members, as you can see here. So design of compression members, we are going to talk about an introduction, what is the meaning of compression members, and then we are going to talk about the types, different types of compression uh, members. And after that, we are going to talk about the column theory and buckling modes, that's very important and going to give us an insight into the behavior of columns. Then we're going to apply, make an application using an example. Then we're going to talk about the critical buckling stress, which is one of the important and major criterion that is controlling the design of columns in general or the compression members, I, if, if we want to be particular. And then I'm going to talk about the effective length, how we can calculate it, and then what are the AISC requirements for compression members and then we can apply this on an example. Uh, okay. After that we are going to talk about the local stability. Still we are under compression members, local stability. And then we are going to talk about the uh, ASIC or AISC tables for compression members. We are going to talk about the different tables that is provided in the manual regarding AISC uh, and how we can use them for the uh, checking the compression members and designing them. Then we're going to apply an example to check what really uh, the or how we can use these tables uh, in a real example. Then we're going to start with the steps for the column design. And then we're going to talk more about effective length. So we're going to have deeper look into the effective length, even that we have touched uh, touched uh, before this uh, this topic. So we already we have mentioned about here, mentioned about it here. But here we are going to talk it, or we are going to talk about it in detail. And then we're going to talk about the effective length of inelastic columns. And then the torsional and flexural torsional buckling. We are going to have an exposure to it. After that, we are going to change the topic and we are going to uh, into another topic which is related to the design <clears throat> uh, of bending members. So we are going to talk about design of bending members. We are going to have an introduction. After that, we are going to talk about bending stress and the plastic moment. And we are going to talk about the uh, stability and classification of shapes and whether it is compact or non-compact or slender and then we're going to talk about the bending moment uh, strengths of compact shapes so maybe we can use the highlighter here <clears throat> so this is let me make it a little bit less sorry we can make it yes here Okay, so we're going to talk about the compact, yes, compact shapes here. Sorry for this. Okay, and then we're going to talk after that about the bending strengths of non-compact shapes. So we are going to cover compact shapes and non-compact shapes. And after that, we're going to talk about shear strength. So we are going to mention about how shear strength can control the design of bending members. Then we're going to talk about deflection and design 
of beams these are considered to be the steps that we're going to follow for designing of beams after that we're going to talk about bearing plates even that it seems not under bending members but actually it is important because there is like flexural straining actions here so it is suitable to be under bending members and then we're going to have an exposure to the design charts in AISC and the manual regarding the design of bending members then we're going to uh, apply numerous examples to make it clear for us how we are uh, using what we have learned in order to design real bending members okay now let's go to the next which is the design of beam column which is considered to be the third uh, part <clears throat> of our after the tension compression and bending then we can talk about the design of beam column uh, which is uh, going to uh, like uh, bring the two uh, behaviors together which is the beam and column together so the flexural effects and the axial uh, effects are going to be merged together and this is how AISC AISC LRFD interaction equation is going to deal with this unique element then we're going to talk about the moment amplification concept and we're going to talk about the braised and unbraised frames this would be a good um, paving for the amplification of moments based on p delta effect we have two types of uh, p delta which is global one and local one we are going to talk about it in details and then we're going to talk about the design steps of the column beams and we are going to use the AISC charts for design it is going to be very helpful for us and we apply it on some examples and at the end we are going to talk about the design of bracing even that it has maybe it is not related directly to this but anyway we put it under this uh, category here it's a little bit different of course but anyway we put it here because we need actually whenever that we design our uh, our structures to have some bracing so we put it here in order to know how we can make a complete structure now we know about tension members compression members bending members and beam column members okay after that we are going to go into the connections which is first of all it is going to be bolted connection uh, and after that we are going to talk about welded connection so under the bolted connection we are going to have an introduction to understand what is the meaning of bolted connection we are going to have some pictures and different uh, connections uh, and after that bolted shear connections and we are going to explain about the failure modes expected we are going to talk about bearing strength spacing and edge distance requirements based on AISC and then we apply it on uh, some examples then we are going to talk about the shear strength and the installation of high strength bolts and after that we're going to talk about the slip critical and bearing type connections what are the differences between the two and how we can design each one of them <clears throat> and what are the, the pros and cons of each one or each type of connection then as usual we are going to apply to apply it on example so our strategy actually is like explaining the philosophy and rational and all the equations based on the AISC and after that we apply apply it on real life examples so that we we, we can understand well what we have learned okay and after that we are going into the <clears throat> welded connection design of welded connection we're going to have an introduction and then we're going to talk about what are the welding terminologies that we uh, we some we face what is the meaning of arc weld and the fillet weld and butt weld and so on these are the some terminologies that we need to understand well and after that we are going to study only about the fillet weld we are not going to study about other types of weld because of the limited time of this course and then we are going to apply some examples based on what we have learned from the uh, fillet weld equations uh, then we are going to give the steps or the summary of the steps for LRFD design of welds 
and then we're going to talk about the limitation regarding the minimum and maximum weld size and length according to AISC and then apply it on examples. Actually, this is considered to be the <clears throat> the, uh, the things that is related to uh, our course. Uh, actually, for the <clears throat> evaluation, we are going to have it as usual. We are going to have like four attendance. It is going to be 20%. This class is going to be offline and online in the same time. So I'm going to uh, record the uh, classes during the uh, conducting the class. So it is going to be offline. And then I'm going to record and upload it to iCampus. So we're going to easily uh, get it online. And also, of course, you can uh, like attend the class. Um, class interaction, 20%. The assignments is going to be 20%. And we have a final exam, which is going to be in week 15. This is the final exam, which is having 40%. Expect the exam problems to be similar to the examples that already we have explained during the course. Uh, during the course, okay, okay. Then uh, about the textbooks that you are going to use. Uh, primarily, I uh, I use uh, Steel Design by William T. Sigwe, fourth edition. <clears throat> this is our main textbook. And of course, it is required for you to use AISC Manual 13th edition. This is required for you. We are going to use it almost every class. And then also it's an op optional for you to use or to have an exposure on steel structure, design and behavior by Simon and Johnson. It is fourth uh, edition. It's a very useful book, I think, if you want to understand the rational and deeper uh, insight into whatever that you are doing and deeper insight into the equations and the code provisions. I think that this is a very nice reference for this. However, uh, Segui book is considered to be like light, simple, straightforward, and comprehensive as well. Okay. Uh, all course materials will be available uh, by or available on the iCampus, so do not worry about this. It is going to be available for you. Well, this this is what I uh, I want you to know about this uh, course. I hope that you enjoy the course, and I hope that it will be good for you to know more about the design of steel structures. And you are going to have a very good exposure, uh, and you are going to have a very good background if you want to work on steel structures and design them. Thank you, and see you soon.